long as that wasn't the, that was either the start bell or the stop bell, I was like breathing, taking breath. I thought, well, the bell just sounded like I can't even go nowhere. Okay. Man, I'm glad so glad everybody's here this morning. You know, you come in, you hear good word, you hear good singing. Everybody gets all pepped up. And it's time to worship. It's time now to get to the, the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of the service. This this morning, I love the blue jean, you know, the blue jean feeling, you got to worry about, you know, sweating. Is everybody comfortable with the temperature? I'm assuming everybody is. You know, it feels good to me just to have a short sleeve shirt and jeans on. Maybe we'll just make every Sunday denim day, you know, and that sounds good to me. But I guess no matter what you got on the outside, you wear what looks good. You wear what you're comfortable in. You wear what you got. Show God, of course, the, the praise where the good stuff, but it's what's inside that counts. You know, just like we're going to have a dinner afterwards. Man, the food can look great, but if you go in there and stick a fork in it and put it in your mouth, the next thing you know, your stomach's already shoving against it. You don't want it. You know, it's what's on the inside. We've got to have God within us. We've got to have His Spirit within us. We've got to have His power within us if we want to, to make a difference in this world. And that's what we should be wanting, to make a difference, to win souls. This morning, boy, we're going to be... Like I said, we're going down to eat, and my favorite thing, I didn't know if anybody brought it or not. Somebody was asking me, what is your favorite thing? Well, if you cooked it and you brought it, that's my favorite thing, chances are, because I eat about everything. But I've told y'all before, the dessert table generally is safe from me. I don't worry about the desserts too much. I'll go up and try them a little bit, you know. But, but me personally, I just keep going back to the real food till it's all gone. I'm a real food person as long as I got some bread. I baked this last night. I'll tell y'all what. I baked this up. Sister, Sister Andy, I baked it like you did. You know how you know. I'm just kidding. No, she does, but I, but I give her a hard time. I went by Kroger and said, 10 for 10. Holy smokes, this big old thing for a dollar. I know what I'm going to take with me and eat tomorrow, you know. I got my own sopping stick. I'll be able just to sop it in, boy. And, you know, y'all can all share, but I just figured after I got through preaching with it, Joe and not want it, you know. So I kept it in the paper. But... Bread, I love bread. Man, bread is just, that is that is a staple in my meal. Bread, cheese, something to dip it in. I'm good. Something to drink because you got to wash it down. <clears throat> but the bread, I love it. Like, you know, somebody asked one time, do you like bread pudding? Since you like bread, you know, I'll eat bread pudding, but I just like bread. Just give it, when we go on those cruises, I talked about this. They got all those good breads on those cruises or the croissants. We used to have vendors bring in donuts constantly and find my, hey, man. Bring in bagels or biscuits. Forget this donut stuff. Bring in something I can enjoy, you know. It's me you trying to impress anyways. I just give it on to the guys. So bread, I love bread. Uh, there's just, I don't know. I guess my body is made for bread. My doctor says it's not. She's all the time getting on too. But I say, yes, bread is the way I should go. And I got to, going through today's, what God, the message you got to give me. Going through that, I was thinking, well, you know what? That just kind of fits. It just makes sense. I love bread, I love God. They kind of just go together, you know. Let's just get into it and we'll see. And, and, and right off the bat in the book of John chapter 6, Jesus is dealing with the Pharisees. Y'all believe that? And here he is having trouble with those guys again. And they're out there, they're talking with him, trying to, of course, catch him, trying to put him under. And they've done talked about how Moses was this, we're children of God, we're not slaves. Oh, no, we couldn't be, you know, we was let out from or. or uh, was Abraham's children and Moses let us out and we're you know we're we're on top of the world we're not slaves to anybody and Jesus starts you know kind of correcting them as he's going and in John chapter six <clears throat> verse thirty it says they said therefore to him what signs showest thou then that we may see and believe what dost thou work our fathers did eat manna in the desert and it's written he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Here they are asking Jesus. Now, hold on. Now, when our forefathers come out, there were signs that was given. God did things. God used Moses. He would use him to lead them out. He split the Red Sea. Matter of fact, they got to where they was going through the desert. He even, he even used Moses to bring in some. And Moses come and told us that they brought in there's going to be manna, there's going to be quail, and, and we would get you know, thirsty, you know, and they, they grumbled and griped. He provided water. Mm -hmm. He says, what signs do you got? Yes. Jesus, what are you gonna? What do you got to show us? And Jesus said, "Looking now, you gotta keep in mind he's been battling for a while, going off and on, knowing what he's up against." And he probably just looks and is like, "You know, you guys, you know, you ever get that? You ever watch something going on, and you just know all this one person's got to do is just thump somebody, you know, like the little gnat 
fell up on me and get them on. Jesus is probably looking like, if you guys only knew, man, I could smoosh y'all right now. But because of his love, he just, he looks at them and he says, for the bread, for the bread, then Jesus said, I fairly unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from them and giveth life unto the world. And then they said to the Lord, well, evermore, give us this bread. Jesus said, oh, no, let me tell y'all something. Number one, it wasn't Moses, but it was God that was supplying the bread. He said, but it wasn't that bread that you need to worry about. It's another bread that was supplied to us. It's another bread that was given <clears throat> to each one of you guys. That is the one that God set down, and it is the bread of life, as he calls it. And he says, this come down from heaven, and it is given to the world. He said, this is the bread that you guys need to eat on. This is the bread that you guys need to get a hold of nowadays. It's not the old bread. It's the new bread. It's not the old way. Don't get stuck off in the old past. Everybody likes to go back and say, oh, but in the old days, this is the way we did it. Yeah, in the old days, they met outside. They didn't have heat and air. They sweated to death. They fought the bees. They fought the bugs. I like a nice, comfy, new padded pew church. I like the new way. The new way seems to be better for me. You know, it fits, fits my style a little bit better. But Jesus kept telling them, hey, don't get stuck in the old way. The old way was little pieces of bread that as the day went on would melt and it would go away. It was there for a second. It was there for a minute. But it only supplied your momentary need. It didn't go any further than the day. He said, but there is a new bread that has come from the Father above. A new bread that's going to be forevermore. And they said, oh, give us this bread. And Jesus is just looking at it, just thinking, yeah. I give it to you. Here I am, right before you. You guys are sitting there. Don't even believe who I am. But then he says in verse 35, I am the bread of life. And he that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. And verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. For I, listen to what 48 says. I love this. For I am the that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and they're dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which come down from heaven, and if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Jesus says, look, what they ate in the past was good. It was little pieces. The bread, boy, you know, they was hungry. They woke up in the morning. They could eat the bread. And it kept them nourished throughout the rest of the day. Till the evening come and till the quail come in. It was good. They had never seen it before. What do we call it? Well, let's just call it manna. Because it's these little pieces from God. It was a blessing. It was something that they needed during that time. But me, I'm sitting there thinking, because you, know, you read through the scripture, it says, boy, you can only gather as much as you're going to eat for that day. I'm thinking, boy, I need a backpack because I can eat my, my weight in bread. That's how come I got the big loaf. And I'm sitting there thinking, okay, God, what kind of bread then do we need today? God says the bread from the past, all that you used to have won't work anymore. That bread was just to get you from point A to point B. He said the new kind of bread that you got to have is a new bread that comes from the Father. It's a new way. It's a new covenant. It's a new law being fulfilled. It is a new kind of nourishment for what you take it in, this bread, you no longer are going to hunger anymore. You don't have to worry about, oh, I'm only going to get enough for today, and then it's going to go away. No, because once you partake of this bread, it just kicks in there and it starts changing. It gives you the nourishment that you need. It not only feeds the body, but it feeds the soul. It feeds everything within us that God's got. Look later on, what did Jesus tell you? Tell the devil, you know, you can't just live by bread alone, but you got to live by every word that cometh out of God. Now, where does that come from? Jesus is actually quoting old scriptures. But then let's go back. Jesus had just told them there was a new bread that come from heaven, a new one. Later on, Jesus tells the devil, you got to live out of every word that comes out from the Father, out from the Word, out from God. you got to live by the Word. Now, let's take those two together. Jesus was born in 
Bethlehem. We all know that. We love the Christmas story. It's coming up, you know. Jesus born in that manger in Bethlehem. It's a great story. We love it. It's the truth, by the way, of a virgin Mary. Born in Bethlehem. Let's break down Bethlehem. You know what Bethlehem means in Hebrew? The house of bread. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Who was born in Bethlehem? Oh, that's Jesus. Oh, that's the new bread. The bread that come from heaven. The bread that once you eat thereof. The bread that once you partake, you will have eternal life. You don't have to worry about being hungry again. That bread, that new bread that come down from heaven. God's bread. The one that was sent for us. Jesus said, you just got to partake of it. You just got to reach in there and, and get yourself, so to speak. Just take me in and just me. You know what the Bible tells us? To take the word and to hide it within us. To take it in and eat it up. Oh, John the Revelator was like, here, eat this up. He goes, Ugh. man, that went down bitter. But it sure did come back up so sweet. I took that word and the word changed me. And then therefore, since I was changed by the word, I was made as God would have me to be. And I could be what I was supposed to be. When we partake of Jesus, this bread, okay? When we partake of him and we take him in, was not Jesus the word incarnate? Was he not the word in the flesh? And Jesus says, you got to take this bread and you got to eat this bread up. Well, all those Pharisees, they all start freaking out. Here they go, oh, wait a minute. What do you mean we got to eat you up? You know, we'll, we'll, take the, we'll take the dollar load from Kroger. But what do you mean you have to eat you up? <clears throat> you know, the devil tries his best to make our minds just not comprehend. The Bible says he's going to take the foolish things to, to, to confound the wise, the little small things. You know what? Our, our, our Christianity, our faith, everything is based upon the, us, based upon our faith, our relationship with God, on believing, right? Amen. We have to believe yeah. What God says. Yes. Well, if we don't believe it, then it just not, must not be true. If, if that can't happen, if that's not scientifically possible, then it's not true. That's not true. But trust me, if you go back and you search to what all God has done, everything that God's done is scientifically possible because God did. Okay, let's go back here. <clears throat> the Jews, therefore, struggled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. That is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna or dead, but he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now let's go back up. And it says, Verily I say unto you, in verse 53, Except you eat the Son of Man, drink his blood, you have no life. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, him shall have eternal life, and I will raise on that last day. What Jesus was telling them, he does that he was the bread that was brought down to be offered up. In other words, Jesus come down to be that sacrifice. In just a little bit, I'm going to sacrifice this piece of bread. Boy, I'm going to take it. You know, we'll pray over it. I'm going to cut it up. I ain't going to take time to throw it in the oven. I'm just going to cut it up. I'm going to put the knife on it. Boy, I'm going to start carving it. I'm going to carve that bread out, and I'm going to be able to take it, and I'm going to eat it with my meal. Boy, that's going to be so good. Yes. It is going to fill me up. It's gonna, I'm going to be able to. I'm going to feel the results of it, you know. Anybody that wants to eat this bread can eat it, and they can share it in the same way. Jesus told me, he said, look, he says, I'm the bread that was sent down. And he said, eventually, you guys are going to carve me up. Y'all going to put the straps across my back. Y'all are going to serve me up and lift me up like on a platter. And he says, and if you want to be partakers of this bread, then now he tells the disciples, oh, he says, come here. Time for that communion. This is my, this is my, my, my body. I'm going to break it. 
Eat this. Every time this dinner is remembered to me. Here, drink this. This is blood. This is the life. Drink this. Yes. Jesus is there saying, you've got to give it all to me. But he's not saying, if you want to save your life, you've got to lose it. If you want to be one of mine, then you've got to sell yours to me. You got, I've, already paid, I've already bought the price. I've already paid the price for you. Give it to me, and, and then you become a new creature. You become something new in Christ. You're no longer even yours anyways. That's why Jesus is saying, folks, you just got to eat me. you got to believe me. You've got to ingest me. I have got to be part of it. You've got to take my word. You've got to put it down. You've got to let me fill you from without and within. They say what goes in is what's going to come out. If you eat unhealthy, you're going to be unhealthy on the outside. So when you take the word of God, that word is just, you know, we got God the Father, we got the Son, God the Spirit, we got Jesus, we got the Word, which is God in typing us, God in text right there. We take that Word and we eat it up. We take it and we ingest it. Man, it's going to come back. Sometimes we're not going to be like John. We're not going to like what it tries to turn us into. We're not going to like what the Word tells us. But if we will take it and we just keep eating, oh, how sweet it's going to come out on the other side. And we take this bread and it's going to be leaven within us. It's going to lift us up so where that God will receive the glory. And God says, if you partake of it, this bread, this living bread, him, him literally, if you believe in him, says you will not have to worry about uh, uh, dying. You're going to have to, I want to resurrect you up. I want to bring you up. Now, let's take it a little bit further. <clears throat> when they were out there, how shall we say out in the desert? We just mentioned about this out in the wilderness. They would get hungry. They'd get the food. God provided the food. Then they would start to get thirsty. There's one thing about bread. Y'all ever, we used to do the kids' crusades, and we'd make these kids do some of the gosh awfulest things. And we quit. We used to make them eat semi marshmallows they could put in their mouth and then say chubby bunny or something like that. And more of these kids said there were six or eight marshmallows in their part. Man, for all, all of us are getting sick just trying to watch them. You know, I don't even say it. And then you do the old Here, eat six crackers, now try to whistle. When you start eating bread, what does bread do? It dries you out. It gets in your mouth, dries you. you got to have something to wash that bread down. And so we'd sit up here with all these kids, and we'd make them cram all these crackers in their mouth to try to whistle. And, of course, they couldn't do it, but you give them something to drink. Well, bam, boy, they could whistle right away. When you get that bread, you get something else to go with it to wash it all down. Jesus has got that covered, too. He said, now, when they're in the wilderness... They were sitting there saying, hey, we need something to drink. Moses would either hit the rock, tap the rock, speak to the rock. The water would flow. In our walk with Christ, he's already told us that he is the bread, but he is also the water that flows within us. He is the new rock. Moses would touch the rock in the wilderness, but Jesus became our rock. In Psalm 62 and 6 it says, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is the rock on which I build my foundation. He is the rock on which I can stand. He is the rock on no matter how hard the hell tries to, to come up against me or Satan tries to come against me. He cannot tear down that rock. If we build our house upon that rock, upon that foundation, then when Satan comes up a knocking, when he comes up huffing and puffing and blowing, he will not be able to get in if you have that rock. John says this. There cometh the woman of Samaria to draw some water, and Jesus said, Give unto her, Jesus said, Give unto her, give me to drink. And Jesus answered and said to her, Thou knewest the gift of God. And who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink? Thou wouldst have asked him, and he would give thee the living water. And Jesus answered and said to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Therefore, with joy, Isaiah says, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. Now, let me get this. Now I got my bread. Now I got my water. I'm set. I'm sitting here. I got food which is going to give me the eternal life. I've got my water, which is going to be the, the wells that springs out within me. I'm going to be able to live forever in Christ. He has given me everything I need, and it all comes from where? 
Only from Jesus. It all comes from within Him. Everything I need to make it through the day, everything I need to make it through eternity, all come from Jesus right here. And I got to thinking about that. I almost named this title something totally different. I heard a Russian comedian one time. He said, you know, he, this is back off in the 80s. He'd come over here and he was like, you know, I love America. It's so great. He said, come over here and the buffets, all this food. The food is just all for $7, all this food. He said, in Russia, we had a buffet. They say, here's you, one piece of bread, thing of water. That's all you can eat. That's you. That's all, that's all you can eat over there. And I thought, wow. Here we consider bread and water prison food. You know? Hey, let's give it to the prisoners. You get bread and water. You know what, folks? If this is prison food, bread and water, as a Christian, I'll take it. Because if I'm going to be imprisoned with Christ, if I am going to be held accountable to live with my cellmate as Jesus Christ, I will take it any day of the week. If Jesus is going to supply me, here you go, Brother Jeff, or my son Jeff, here's your bread, here's your water, eat it up, drink it up. It's going to keep you going. It's going to keep you full. It's going to give you eternal life. It is my word that lives within. You drink it. Put it back out. Share it with everybody. I say, I'll give God, I'll give Jesus a new baker. I'll help him produce whatever he needs. I will drink from that fountain every chance I get. I will eat of that bread every chance I get. And I will be all that he wants me to be. Why? Because I believe in the bread and the water. I believe in the word of God. And I believe that that is what he wants us to see. And that is who he wants us to be. He wants us to know who he is. Now these poor Pharisees, they're still struggling within themselves. Thinking back, how in the world are we going to eat him? How are we going to? We're not cannibalistic. Folks, you've got to look beyond your little pea brain mind, which makes us want to, because Satan gets a hold of it, and makes us want to try to make everything that God says hard or hindrance. Reach out. The Bible says that we are to die to ourselves every day. Every day we're to get up, kick off this old body, kick off this flesh, Say, God, anoint me anew today. God, let me start anew again today. Let me be the bread. Let me be the water. Let me share with those that's out there. And we won't be the prisoners of this old world. We're not going to be the ones that's held bound and under. We might be eating the prison food, but let me share this with you. In John 8, it says, Ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, you will be free indeed. If we're eating up the bread and we're drinking up the water. <clears throat> John tells us this. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Folks, you better grab a hold of that bread. You better grab a hold of that water. You better reach in there and get what you want. You better grab, you better hope the baker is still cooking and the bread is there or you can break it with him and you can take it in and let him change you. You better hope that you have a like it. I don't know, what's everything nowadays? Everybody nowadays is something intolerant. I don't know what it is. What's that thing everybody go on? Somebody knows it. Oh, I don't like the bread. Can't have the bread. You don't like the bread? Sorry. I'm not Jesus intolerant. I'll take the bread with wheat, without wheat, with germ, whatever. I don't care what's in it because if the bread is the bread of God, the world might not like it. The world might say, oh, you can't have that. I can, well, you know what? If you want to live in the world, you can't have Jesus. You can't have what he's got because what he's got is power. What he's got is love. What he's got is truth. What he's got is something that will change your life if you will just partake, if you will just eat of it. Man, take that bread and water all day long. I'm hungry. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Not, not just for the, <clears throat> for the food downstairs, but I'm hungry for what God's got for me. I'm hungry for what God, what I want to see God do. I'm hungry for what I want to say. I want God to open up a, let this be a bakery. You know, I used to say, let it be a hospital, you know. Let it be a bakery, God. Bake in here so the others go smell the bread. Smell your presence. Smell your, you got it. They will come in and they too will want to just take that bread. You ever go by a bakery? It is the best smelling place on the block, you know. I think they, they set the fans to blow it out the door. They leave their doors open no matter what. So you're walking by saying, hmm, I think I'm just going right in here, you know. 
It don't matter if it's 20 degrees outside. That door is open, so you'll smell it and you'll come in. We've got to be the bakery. We've got to let God change us. We've got to let God use us. But we have got to eat that bread. We've got to take that bread in. It's got to be our meal. It's got to be what we rely on to get us through the day. Because it won't just take us through the day. It's going to take us to eternity. I want some bread. I want some bread. Come to the piano. Come to the instruments, whatever. I'm telling you, folks. Too many people, I don't know. I, like I said, I, that is my, this is my weakness, the bread. It really is because that's just, I love the textures of them. I love the smell. The taste. It's still in paper. Y'all can still have it if you want. It's up there. I'll take it home and eat it myself. There's plenty more down there. There's Hawaii bread. There's other stuff. There's just something about that bread. You know, I want to make it my own. I do. You know, I don't want to share it, but I will. You know, I want God so much inside of me that, you know, I just want to. You ever, you ever watch bread, bread bake? Let me get it right in a minute. You start out, I've already done it like once or twice. But, you know, you get it there, you put it in this pan. And if you don't follow instructions like I use it all the first time, you know, next thing you know is Rex was makes his garbage bread and I was gonna try some of that one time and I've set the stuff out and let it rise up. And man, that stuff's in my refrigerator, went up to the next rack, you know? And it's just I'm like, wow, well that stuff grows, don't it? It just keeps going. That's how the word of God is. Man, it gets going, it gets growing. You can't contain it. It'll bust out of your saran wrap. It'll push your refrigerator racks up. You know, it'll come out of that pan that it's in. Don't try to contain it. Let the bread grow. And then eat it up. Enjoy it. Share it with everybody else around you. The bread of life is Jesus Christ. The water from which the wells come from for everlasting life is Jesus Christ. Do you have that with you this morning? Are you hungry? Do you want more? Do you, do you want to be the heaven God? Lord, just put some more in and bake me up. Are you wanting to be for Him? If so, do you also share it? <coughs> We've got to share that bread. If we don't share it, you know, what's the world going to do? Open up your door. Let them get that aroma. Let them come to you. When they get there, be prepared to break it off. Here, I want to share Jesus with you. I want to share something. I want to share what he's done in my life. I want to share what he's done for my family. And I want to tell you what he can do for you. Trust me, you don't have to force feed nobody the bread. All you got to do is let them smell it and let them see it. You know, for long, they're going to be like, reaching in themselves. That's pretty good. That's the way God works. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, <coughs> Lord, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. God, I thank you for your strength, God. And God, I thank you for your bread. Father, I thank you for the word, God, that you have made for us. God, Lord, you've laid out this word and you've laid out a plan of salvation. God, the Bible says that no man can come to you, but come to the Father, but by you. So God, this morning, there's one here that does not know you as their personal Savior. God, I'm asking that you just let them taste of that bread. Let them drink of that well, that water from you, Father. God, this morning we ask that your spirit just come in and start touching and moving and ministry. And God, what I'm asking that you just touch each one of us that's in this house, Father. God, sometimes bread can sit on a shelf, God, Lord, and you know, it can get all stale and hard, Father. We ask that you just keep the bread within us fresh and alive. God, Lord, don't let us Allow our bread to get still, but God, Lord, just keep our bacon pans open and God, keep pouring out your spirit into us. And Father, let us overflow and win souls for your kingdom. My God, I'm asking that you just touch and move and minister this morning in this house as your spirit starts to move. We just give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. These altars are open. If you want to come pray, if you want to come lift up his name, if you want to come and worship, if you want to just talk to God. Maybe you need to, you know, maybe you need to put in a fresh order. Whatever you need to do, God is there. He's waiting. And all He wants you to do 
is give in and give up. He'll do the rest. He'll bake the bread, you partake it, and then you share it with those around you. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and 